everybody, Bob here, and welcome to another Making Stuff video. This is video number 10 in the filament extruder project, and it is just a quick update of where I am on this project and what I plan to do going forward. And if you watched the last video, I was having problems with the filament. It was coming out uh, erratically at all different sizes, and it was changing very fast. And after I'd let that run for a while, um, I took some of the filament, and you could even just run your fingers down. You could feel it just wavy and is, is just not usable. Uh, I also had a problem with some uh, metal shavings appearing in there and some trash and some other things. So um, I've made a few updates to try and fix these problems and it's come out pretty close. I've got most of the problems fixed and I had another one crop up. So the first problem that was fixed, and this cured most of them, was getting rid of this. Uh, if you've watched the previous videos, this is the insulator that the heated end would be on this end and then the plastic and the hopper would be on this end. And this was supposed to keep the heat from making its way all the way to the hopper. And it did its job, but the problem is with these plumbing pieces, this came from the, the plumbing department, they're not machined pieces. They are not, there's no precision in them. Um, they're cast pieces. And, and this had two problems. The first problem was it's not square. So to exaggerate, screwing the pipe in on this side and then screwing it on this side, it was not straight. Uh, you could turn this and you could see that one pipe was in at an angle and then the other one was in at another angle. And it was, there was enough tolerance in there for the drill bit to go through there and turn, but it was scraping the sides of the pipe, which is where I believe most of the uh, metal shavings were coming from. So I got, I got rid of this and that solved the metal shavings problem because 99.9% .9 of the metal shavings disappeared when I got rid of this. Also, this is not, um, it is not straight through. It, it's cone or funnel shaped. So this end, it, it wants to flare out on the inside. And what that was allowing was the plastic would build up around this edge right here where the, the flange meets the, the threading. It would, there was enough in there to, to uh, build up and it would spin around and you could see the indentions in the wood and what this was doing was causing the plastic to bunch up and then the drill bit would force it through a big old chunk of plastic through and I believe that's what was causing the erratic um, measurements on the plastic so it was just doing like bursts of plastic through it instead of a steady flow so that was this was the culprit on most of the uh, problems that I was having now when I removed this Another problem cropped up, and that was it got rid of all those problems, but now the plastic wasn't flowing out the nozzle fast enough to make 1.75 millimeter filament. It was making about 1.4. No matter how fast I turned up the, uh, the feed rate on the drill bit, it just would not get over about one and a half millimeters. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I've put the old nozzle back on. If you remember from the previous videos, the old nozzle was too big. So this is an oversized nozzle. It's about two millimeters. So it's about a quarter millimeter oversized and I was a quarter millimeter under. So I'm hoping that this will get the flow to uh, come out at a steady rate at the size that I need to make usable filament. Uh, I did run the extruder um, with the old nozzle in there and it was consistent. It, that, that erratic behavior disappeared with all the changes I made. Now another change that I made was on the puller rollers where the uh, bearings connect to the calipers. I had those uh, connected to the 3D printed part and I was using regular nuts on that so I had to change those over to nylon, the nylon lock nuts. And that was another reason why I was getting erratic um, measurements because the bearings weren't straight they were at an angle 
and the filament would move and, it, and the bearings would, would shift and that would cause the calipers to go up and down. Um, so that was another reason why I was getting those erratic numbers on the uh, readout on the uh, circuit board and the calipers. And then the third and final change I made is if you go back to the first videos where I'm assembling the motor onto the drill bit, I had a little U-joint and this U-joint, um, for some reason I decided I didn't need it. And what was happening was um, the motor and everything, it, it wants to, it, it's still, there's, it's not straight and it wants to kind of wobble around. And I don't know if that's just something wrong with the motor, if something's out of the line, like the bearing on the extruders out of alignment, but putting that U-joint film or that U-joint uh, fitting on the drill bit, that caused a lot of that wobble to be removed because that U-joint uh, picks up the wobble instead of it going through uh, the drill bit, which I think also helped to reduce uh, some of those metal shavings on the, uh, the filament that was coming out. Now, back to the metal shavings. I think the reason why I'm getting those shavings in the first place is because I'm using galvanized pipe. And I'm pretty certain those metal shavings that are coming off are the coating for the galvanized uh, pipe on the inside. It's just that coating that's coming off. Because the drill bit, I've removed it several times and looked, and nowhere on that drill bit does it show any signs of wear or um, like a shiny or grinded spot where it's rubbing on that pipe continuously. So if I get all these other problems fixed and those metal shavings are still an issue, then I'm going to switch over and take those galvanized pipes out and probably put some stainless in there. But hopefully that's not going to be required, but if so, so be it. Um, so. That's where I'm at with the uh, extruder right now, and I've also started on the software for the uh, PID controller. Um, I just had some hard-coded stuff in there for just, just it was just all hard-coded in the Arduino code, and I've got the menu where it's working. Um, I can change some of the values on the fly, and I've also got a manual mode where I can turn off the um, the PID algorithm altogether and just have it, the rollers run at a steady rate. And that's to help with uh, debugging. So a lot of you guys have been asking questions like, where did I get the motor? What size motor is it? What kind of heat band is it? And I haven't posted that on the webpage yet. And for the reason is exactly this, this reason right here. It's not a finished project, project or product and I don't want to be putting a lot of things on there and then having to take them off and then say, oh, well, now I use this drill bit instead of this other drill bit or, you know, a different motor or now I'm running it at 24 volts instead of 12 volts. There's just too much that's still changing and I'm still dialing it in. So the guys are asking questions. I'm not ignoring you guys. I will post a BOM. I will post software. Uh, drawings and everything on there when this thing gets closer to a finished project. I hope you like this little update that I'm giving you on the filament extruder. I just really haven't had a whole lot of time to work on it. Not as much time as I wish I had. And uh, I just want to give you guys a quick update of where I am. So please give me that thumbs up. Uh, if you like the video, uh, subscribe so you don't miss any more of the upcoming videos. And thanks for watching.